definitely not the starters. You're on the End of the Bench podcast from 100.7 The Score. I'm Mike Hebert, owner of Cantex Roofing and Construction. Every day is game day, and we'll get it right when it comes to your roofing, construction, windows, and mirrors. Call Cantex Roofing and Construction today. Together, we are one serving you. Hey, what's going on? Happy Monday. Good morning and welcome on to the end of the bench on 100.7 The Score, 107thescore.com and the 100.7 The Score mobile app. Brought to you as always by Happy State Bank. Alongside Jeff Haxton, I'm Choice Woodman, Lucas White across the way handling us today. You can uh, hit us up. Thoughts, comments, questions, allegations, accusations, hopes, dreams, whatever you got. Bring those in on the Yates Flooring Center chat line. Hey, score prediction. We've got uh, basketball games early week. We've got basketball late in the week, and it's bowl week. So uh, whatever you want to bring in, we will uh, we'll read and we'll get to. Uh, Lucas tells me coming up at 930, we have some interesting pick'em results, which has me a little puckered up. Yeah, me too. I, know it's, I knew it was going to be close just looking at the games, but may come down to a tiebreaker. We will see. Um, <laughs> Don't smile, Lucas. Oh, Lucas, with him, uh, the one thing you I know, know it's out not of this, him. Exactly. It's the, not Lucas. The only thing I know out of this is Lucas is not on the wheel because he's he's, he's kind of excited about this. So Lucas won't be on the wheel. We'll see if any of us are who who will be. Uh, we got a lot to get into. We'll talk bowl game because we really haven't talked about Tech and Cal much. Uh, your excitement level for this game because I know Jamie brought that up on the morning drive and um, curious, you know, are people actually excited for this December 16th bowl game, which feels so early in the bowl season? Um, we'll get into that. Uh, we'll talk about the latest in the portal news as there's, there's definitely some big news. A lot of additions over the weekend for Texas tech on incoming portal players. Uh, so we'll get to that. We'll talk, uh, how about them Cowboys? They're real hacks. I'm buying it. Just to see them lose this weekend. But I'm buying no. in. You don't think so? No, I, I think they're one of the two best teams in the NFL. Unfortunately, they're, the two are in the same league. That's that's the yeah. problem. That's a big problem. There's, yeah, Super Bowl is hard to get to because that other team is San Francisco, who kicked their butt earlier this year and right now would own a, uh, a tie break. But... A lot of football to be played, but thrashing that, people. That was the first uh, real prove it. Game Cowboys are seen. thrashing people too, though. Now they are. They are. Uh, the, the Dak Prescott thing is fascinating to think about with him being now the overall favorite to win the NFL MVP, yeah. and all of a sudden, you know, I'm thinking about <clears throat> the personnel the Cowboys have. Tony Pollard is okay. Mm-hmm. It's not like he's got. Um. McCaffrey to turn around and hand it off to. Oh yeah, there's you a can big go down the list there. of guys that uh, Tony Pollard doesn't equate to. Um, the tight ends have gotten much better. Ferguson's really blossomed into a extremely good tight end. The wide receivers are good and good enough, especially with CD Lamb. I think the Cowboys are based on that defense. But Dak, being what he's been this year, is mm-hmm. making a lot of people look pretty brilliant in that front office at this moment. And this is a, a really fascinating story about Dak. And, and again, after December 10th, the prohibitive favorite to win the NFL MVP. It's crazy to see the uh, what he's done this year and what we talked about last year because – you know, last year was the anomaly in his career. He turned the ball over a lot, led the league in interceptions, and then he turns around to have his best year of his career thus far. Um, it's it's wild to see what he's done. On the other front, uh, the Kansas City Chiefs are heading the other direction and lots of frustrations. One of the weirdest calls that erases what would have been one of the coolest plays we've seen in uh, in a game. So that was, that was a, a crazy one last night. I still don't know how to feel because I I kind of defer to NFL players and their reactions on the mm-hmm. uh, on the Chiefs stuff because I've seen several guys say you just don't make that call 
Like you, you get warnings before you get that. I've seen several so you NFL. Just, you just don't follow the rules. Well, yeah, no, no, and that's what I'm saying. I'm not, I'm not taking a side here because to me, he's offsides and he's supposed every single time. I know this. I wasn't ever well, you know, junior high receiver a little bit, but I know what you do. You look over to the referee near side. You point to him. He will tell you scoot back or scoot up to get your positioning. Every single time, that's a receiver's job. So, Kadarius Tony is one of the most boneheaded guys I've seen in the NFL in a while, and he has cost the Chiefs, literally cost them games this year. So Let me tell you what bothers me the most out of everything that happened. It was um, not Mahomes losing his mind on the sideline. That's heat of the moment stuff. I can understand. Uh, he did act like about a two-year-old child when he did that and went over there and pitched a fit, and then cursed at the official and cursed and cursed and cursed. Mm-hmm. Um, the, the one that bothers me the most is the handshake with Josh Allen afterwards. Is that supposed to get out, though? I mean, they know that there are yeah, mics I mean, and stuff everywhere. You know but, it's going to get but out. But those they, are supposed to be fairly they got quiet. got 17 cameras exchanges. running at them. I know, but they're, they're supposed to be whispered exchanges, and at, mics pick up everything nowadays. Because I, I agree with you. You, that's not how you say you guys shouldn't have won, basically. <laughs> yeah. It's like He's, everything that you just him, did means nothing because true. an official said I made a call that shouldn't have been made. I think that's this, the one that bothers me the most. I think this is the vat boiling over majorly from last week, though. Remember last week yeah. what happened? Yeah. It, Valdez Scantling, one of the worst no non PI yeah. calls we've ever seen, and they don't get it. There so are I also think, bad calls in the Chiefs' favor. One, I would say, if we're talking down the stretch. But yeah. yeah, if you go back and look at the game and look at the the years that we've watched oh, sure. this happen here, sure, sure, things so, balance out. But to meet a, a fellow peer, yeah, I would it, say, and a guy that's a damn good quarterback at midfield, and say that was the call, <laughs> yeah, totally diminishes all the you know they're talking about being professionals and we don't call this stuff. The other side's pros too, and you got to at least say good game, yeah. Yeah, that's that's weak. Agree, and it, I still think that's heat of the moment, and again, frustrations. I don't excuse it. I'm with you, but it's a that's one where again, I'm I'm deferring to the experts, which are the guys that actually played the game in the NFL. So, hacks, we had two calls, two of those the entire year last year. The the offensive offsides, one the entire year, the year before. There've been eleven. Here's my conspiracy theory. We saw one in the Cowboys game against the Eagles last night. Did you see it? It was no. on one of the tush pushes. They called oh. one, the left guard for being too far up. Got it. I think that is a memo from the NFL. Hey, this just happened in this previous game. We need to make everybody see that we just called. We're calling this more this year. So if you get a chance, call one of these offsides on the I, offense. I think it just shows literally how dumb tony was oh in the situation he was way up too it was when you're standing in the neutral zone you're standing in the neutral zone yeah. you can't let that go you just can't and if you don't check flags going up in the air well i've seen several quarterbacks also come to the defense former quarterbacks like dan orvalski and such say stupid stupid tony but this never ever gets called, and you get warnings for this every time before. Apparently, this is something that they have put a emphasis on in the NFL this year because that was the twelfth one this season. Y'all tell us what you think. We'll talk a lot of Cowboys, a lot of Texas Tech. Look ahead to the bowl game. Have a little fun this morning. See you into the bench till noon on one hundred point seven. The score. Definitely not the starters. You're on the end of the bench podcast from 100.7 The Score. It's time for a few headlines. What you need to know, part of the end of the bench on 100.7 The Score and 107thescore.com. Choice Woodman, Jeff Haxton here in the First United Bank studio. We'll get to uh, some of your thoughts rolling in on the 8th Flooring Center chat line, update you on the uh, transfer portal coming up shortly as well, but... Right now, a lot of headlines. The other thing we'll get into uh, a little bit later. Got to tease, but mention uh, psychotic college basketball coaches. They seem to be everywhere. So definitely want Something to get into that. Is in the air, water, 
I don't know, but we got some <laughs> we got some guys some nut acting jo- crazy right now. Nut jobs. Yeah. We'll uh we'll die dive into that coming up in a little bit after some stuff there's a the guy weekend. from Maynard that made an announcement during the break go ahead well no you you go ahead no, that I mean, is i'm the, just the one that saw it with my eyes first you're, is, you're the football guy go ahead that is the breaking news right now is uh taj brooks has announced he's returning for his super senior season next year this is massive news and i think uh, tea leaves not tea lives but tea leaves those that you know, when you saw cameron valdez go into the portal you can start to read into things. Um, this, you know, the more whispers you hear and all that, but this is this is massive news for Texas Tech that your biggest offensive producer is uh, is coming back, and what a luxury that is for your offensive line, for your quarterback, for receiver play that should be better next year. Should be uh, all of the above. Better be. It's going to be your. I mean, you get your best offensive player back, and uh, love, love to see that if you're a Red Raider fan. Um, it makes you feel a whole lot better about, you know, questions of portal this, portal that. Is is there, you know, something wrong, that kind of deal? Or And what you're going to see with a healthy season next year, Hacks, is a guy that's going to vault into the top five all-time list and really get what the who's who of uh, Texas Tech running backs in in program history he's already i think seventh on the all-time list right mm. now um you if he has another thousand yard season he's he's going to get in some rare air and i would i would fully expect that uh, if he can stay healthy next year so well i'm trying to look up his stats schwa and i had them pulled up and the internet is just taking a, a foot to my rear end this Ooh. morning so i think I'll, it is uh, uh i think he's close to 1400 yards uh Taj did tweet this, though, four minutes ago, so that's why we're hitting you with the breaking news, and he did the uh, Wolf of Wall Street. Uh, 49 seconds. I really enjoy that one. Yeah, which is... The I'm back You one. know what? I'm not leaving. I'm not leaving. Not leaving. Blank, 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 blank. So another tech player did that last year. It was one of the DBs, maybe Rashad Williams or Malik Dunlap, that did it. I really like that one. All right, uh, other headlines for you Stupid computer. today uh let's start off with internet what in the world where did i put my headlines oh there they are uh dallas cowboys won last night 33 to 13 with sunday night football taking out the eagles so the cowboys are tied for the best record hacks in the national football league a are we sitting at a three or four way tie there eagles Definitely in the NFC, it's Eagles, uh, Cowboys, and 49ers. Do are the Dolphins ten and three too? I'm looking for for help. No, no. Oh, Dolphins play tonight. They play tonight. So I, we why do we have a double Monday Night Football game? I tonight? don't know. I don't understand the the reasoning there. We'll have one of those games for you on Double T ninety seven three. Start with Cowboys Hour of Victory Monday at six, and then Packers at Gigantes at seven o'clock. On Double T 97.3. High School Fan Zone, yours, Coronado, Estacado, Lubbock High, Monterey. All the Lubbock ISD school coaches will come into the First United Bank studio to talk about their teams. That starts at 6 on 100.7 the score. Uh, if you miss it, the Chiefs lose 20-17 to the Buffalo Bills. And there was some controversy at the end. Definitely some uh, griping and whining at the end. Uh, Texans also lose 30 to 6 to the New York huh, Jets. Huh, huh, huh. <laughs> All four of us. You you almost did it, but you didn't want to take the risk. <laughs> you should have gone to Jets Island. You could have. Let's see if that was uh, the difference maker. I don't could, know. I looked up could the key be. thing. I don't think I'm in trouble. You think you're okay? I think I'm okay. I bet you are. There's a little key thing at the end there that I was. The Bills Chiefs? Closest to. Are you sure? Mm-hmm. You remember what we did? Yeah. Total yardage, not yeah. rushing yards. Okay. Okay. What do you have? 97, I think. 96. Oh, I thought I saw 56. Uh, Dang it! No, I don't think you're... Never closest. mind! We'll get to that in a moment. Uh, Mavs Grizz tonight at 8 o'clock from Memphis. Spurs Rockets. Spurs tried to snap a 15-game losing streak. That number keeps ballooning. They'll play in Houston at 7 o'clock. 
Um, Stars play the Red Wings tonight at 7 o'clock in Dallas. You two can join us. Your thoughts, your comments, your questions. I can't wait anymore. we gotta, we got to find out. All right, let's figure this out. Tell us. Okay, so in first place with 7-3 and three is me. Smiling Lucas. Oh, smiling Lucas. Second place, six and four, hacks. Boo! Off that man. wheel. Stop Boo that. this man. Stop that train. Okay, so here's where it gets a little complicated. Very so we complicated. need to figure this out. Okay. Bullfighter and Choice both went five and five. Okay. Tiebreaker, he got 96. Choice said 104. Bullfighter said 88. That's both eight numbers higher and lower. Smack dab in the middle. <laughs> so it's exactly yes. in between. Okay, so here, I got to be honest. I did know this. And I was following uh, at one point. So that I'm, I think they've adjusted one of the stats. Because when I looked after the game last night, it was 97 yards total. So I think they've pulled it. Let's see. He had 37 yards and 59 so they pulled one of the rushing yards because it was 60 last night. So I'm like, oh my gosh, I got it by a yard. So now, instead, we have to go to the uh, second tie break, which is the score in the Cowboys game. And I think he got that one. Did he? I don't know. He actually. went 28 to 24. You went 31 30. Oh, okay. So really, it ends up being total score because we both picked Cowboys. Which is what? 33 plus 13. On air math. 40, not our strong suit. 46 is, is the total. And I went 61. <laughs> and he went... He's lower. He got me. 28-24 is 40, 50, 52. Yeah. yeah. Shucks. I'm paying up on one of my punishments today. Oh my goodness, would you look at this? I'm sad. What an I really enormous thought. Kid you not. Spin. I hope he doesn't have to I spin saw it again, last night. I'm like, he, he got 97 yards. Again. And they pulled a freaking yard. I'm going to go look officially. I saw his 59. Spin it again. Uh, well, I looked on ESPN. I'm going to look on the Cowboys website oh. to make sure. I'm sure they're exactly the same. But literally, it said 19 carries or whatever it was for 60 yards last night. So. And this wasn't he did he didn't have another rush after that. That was the thing. Because I'm like, oh my gosh, just don't lose lose a yard or anything. Oh, son of a guns. I'm sad now. But we got to hear Bob Barker, so. You're welcome. Uh who will be Brooks backups going forward? Uh so Cameron Valdez. Here's what I understand, what I know. Um Cameron Valdez and Loic Fungi, there may be one more player. Uh, are in the portal currently, but both of those guys will play in the bowl game. So if they're playing in the bowl game, uh, there is there is a chance that they still return to Texas Tech. So you know you have relationships that are different with different people in the portal. Sometimes it's don't yeah. let the door hit you on the way out, and then sometimes it's, okay, we understand you want to test waters. We'll let you do this, uh, but you have probably said date. You ha- need We need a decision by because we've got to move on or not. So I know one thing that um, you, if this was even five years ago, 10 years ago, one thing that NIL has done has made college sports so much more attractive to the borderline yeah. athlete. The bo- the Kevin McCuller, Terrence Shannon, Taj Brooks. Taj Brooks yeah. They're like, hey, you know, life's not too bad around here. I think I might stick around come back and and do this again and that's one thing that nil has done it's made it so attractive i agree yeah and uh for texas tech in this case it's a really good thing uh to answer who will be the backup if cameron isn't here uh anquan willis supposed to be pretty darn good and there's a, a freshman that may get some playing time next year as well Playing time is not required. This is the end of the bench podcast from 100.7 The Score. Glad to be part of your Monday on to hour number two. It's the end of the bench on 100.7 The Score and 107thescore.com. Choice Woodman, Jeff Haxon, Lucas White, 
Hanging with you from the First United Bank studio this morning. Keep the uh, thoughts and commentary rolling in on the Yates Flooring Center chat line. Big news of the morning. Taj Brooks announces he's coming back for the 2024 football season. Um, We'll continue to talk about that. Want to look ahead to what's ahead this week. Independence Bowl. Definitely talk some more Cowboys as they uh, finally won one of those prove-it games last night against the Eagles. And uh, might have the best kicker ever. <laughs> Dude's uh, nails. silky smooth from however far you <laughs> need it to be hit. Just be a soccer player for most of your career and turn into a kicker. That's how it works. So uh, we'll we'll dabble in that as well. But hacks, uh, you mentioned this to me. Mentioned to me this before the show, um, and I, I had already had it on my list to bring up. But we. We've seen some nut jobs in college basketball. Heck, we had kind of a nut job in college basketball uh, a couple of years ago here in in Lubbock, Texas. But it it feels like it's just getting yeah. worse and worse. And we're we're seeing stories out of Michigan right now. Of uh, I saw a report that you're seeing maybe a potential firing there. Michigan's kind of denying it at the moment, but alleged punches, thrown. smoke, a lot of smoke, lots of smoke. Uh, Eric Musselman loses his mind on the floor, and you know, walk by Musselman officials. in the Bahamas, and everything about that man exuded absolute craziness to me. To First off, he's about five six. He just shocked me how tiny he was. Yeah, and he he just looked that he had that crazy look in his eye, and he got thrown out of a game. I said it's now two times that he's been thrown out while playing the University of Oklahoma. His Arkansas team got battered. OU's one of the best stories, I guess, of the year. I mean, in being right in, now. The, in the top twenty, you don't think it, you think it's poser? No, not necessarily poser. But once they hit the league, I think it's going to be just like it is for almost every team not named Kansas or or Baylor. I think. So who am I missing in that group? Kansas, Baylor, Houston. Oh, Houston, Kansas, Baylor, Houston. Uh, everybody not named them, and I think Houston will get beat up a little bit. So I really think those other top, top two. Outside of them, you're going to see a lot of teams very close to 500. So this morning, we we got to see Juwan Howard. You know, he didn't go crazy, but he turned into a oof. He went. He turned into a madman. He did. Yeah, but we've seen him do crazier stuff as far as like thrashing through guys physically. This was all verbal punching uh, a coach, the Wisconsin coach. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So a confrontation between Howard and longtime Michigan strength and conditioning coach John Sanderson in a team practice late last week is being explored and going through a university review process that is university procedure, blah, blah, blah. Multiple sources say claims of punches being thrown in the aforementioned altercation are inaccurate. But Sanderson did not travel to Iowa with the team for Michigan's game at Iowa he did not return a call for comment, according to a university source. Sanderson currently remains a part of the program. Worth noting, Howard remains under a zero-tolerance policy instituted by Michigan after striking a Wisconsin assistant coach in February of 22. Um, l- listen, I know one of my best friends that I've made through my travels in this industry is the athletic trainer for Michigan and that's Chris Williams. And I just texted him this morning a, a text of support. I was like, man, knowing how the structure is of these basketball staffs, I know Chris has seen a lot. He's seen a lot go down yeah. that's not being reported on, that's not in the public light even. So I just wanted to send my, um, hey, hang in there to Chris because uh, he's in a tough spot. But uh, Chris was here when... Uh, Coach Beard was here. When Chris was here. <laughs> yeah. Uh huh. And um, went to be a part of the Timberwolves, and then now he's with uh, Michigan. Remember, he was with Culver. Yep. While I do remember that. was there. So, yeah, I, I don't know what needs to change. Um, if if Juwan Howard is punching someone again under the zero tolerance, if if the alleged rumors are true, then. I mean, I personally, I said when it happened, he should be fired. At minimum, suspended the rest of the season. And he didn't get the rest of the season. He got 
no, several games. I can't remember what the exact number was. But he, look, you are setting an example. You are showing, you, I know that we're all about calling it business and college athletics. These are still very moldable young men that you are influencing. And the, the, the thought that words or the, the action that the reaction to words is violence or sw- taking a swing at someone is a horrible, horrible message for your team. And the fact that he basically got away with it, he got away with it. I, I don't know. I, I say he got away with it. The punishment was not that bad for him. Wasn't that bad for him uh, to miss a handful of games last year. Last year or two years ago. Two years ago, right? For the the swinging. Yeah. Two years ago. Uh-huh. So, I don't know. This this Juwan Howard stuff, it's nuts. Well, like I said. I don't know with, how you rein it in, though. No, I don't know either. I think it's just part of the profession. It's going to make people crazy. Um, but I always said that when I heard. Now, this was a lot on a personal level, but when I heard Chris Beard was going to Texas, it was one of the best days that Tech could have ever hoped for because he was a ticking time bomb. Now he was not going to explode on your campus. He was going to explode on somebody else's campus. Well, that time bomb went boom. Um, you know, somehow, again, he's still doing his thing at the Division One level. And um, it's kind of the same thing, it feels like, for me, for Jawan Howard. I mean, we've seen the time bomb go boom a couple times already. Yes, we have. And he's still working. It, it's not. I, I don't see this getting reined in. It, at some point, maybe maybe not this year, might be five years from now, it'll go boom again and be even worse. Yeah. This one just happens to not be caught on camera, at least publicly. I mean, I'm sure it's on camera. Everything seems to be on camera nowadays. Yes. But, um, we've already we, we've shown what the example is with, with um, oh my gosh, I just blanked. Who's the nut job playing for the Warriors right now? Draymond. Draymond. Thank you. Oh my gosh, you just get those brain bubbles. Uh, Draymond Green, the example that's been set for him over and over. Dude is. You saw that highlight reel of taking shots and cheap shots, cheap shots at people, and literally he's punched his own teammate. But wear a cup. Doesn't get much for it. If you're good, it doesn't matter. I've seen that forever in the history of sports. If you're good, you get a slap on the wrist. Now, is Juwan Howard good enough is the question. Because they were good early in his mm-hmm. time. Now 500 last year. Yeah, now they're Floating around there this year. So it turns into an excuse for firing eventually. And that might be what we see for Juwan Howard. Playing time is not required. This is the end of the bench podcast from 100.7 The Score. Onward to hour number three. It's the end of the bench on 100.7 The Score, 107thescore.com, and the 100.7 The Score mobile app. Brought to you, as always, by Happy State Bank. Alongside Jeff Haxton, I'm Choice Woodman. Looks white across the way, handling us. Uh, Keep hitting us up. Yates Flooring Center chat line yours through the 100.7 The Score mobile app and at 107thescore.com. We'll uh, continue to get into a variety of topics. Talk some more Cowboys, Eagles. As the uh, Did the Cowboys you know, turn any sort of page in your mind for Super Bowl contention? Maybe you're already there. Maybe you're waiting. Maybe it wasn't enough last night. But uh, we'll get into that. Talking some uh, Independence Bowl I got lists. It's the third hour. I usually bring uh, a list or two here in the third hour for you. Just to, you know, want everybody to be well-rounded, obviously. On television this hour as well, Fox 34 News now. So however you're joining us, we are glad that you've uh, you've chosen to make us part of your Monday. But I'm going to kick off this hour talking about what we got at the end of the week. The Independence Bowl. Um you know, I've I've just trying to put feelers out there, uh, talking to friends that are Red Raiders, talking to to various people, looking at message boards, looking at. It, there's just doesn't seem to be as much chatter about this bowl game. I don't know if it's time of year or that it intersects with a basketball game or you know what all. It's probably little of you know every column to to put in there, 
but it just doesn't seem like there's as much chatter about the bowl game itself. Um, so excitement level may be different than interest level. If I'm asking the question of what's your interest level in this game. Um, but I, I am curious what the Dobbers like for Red Raider fans, Mm -hmm. because for me, there's two factors that have me, you know, quite intrigued. Obviously I have to be interested doing this job, doing another job. Um, I have to be very engaged with that game. But even if I'm sitting there as a fan, I'm pretty interested in this game for two reasons. The not going sub 500 reason, not going below 500, because you're sitting at six and six, you lose that game, you have a losing season. Now you get to a bowl game and all that, but it's still, it's still a losing season. You go six and seven. Doesn't feel good. So the optics of getting to seven and six matter quite a bit to me. And then the opponent too. I don't know how much Cal does to to stir the pot for other people out there, but the arrogance that we've seen displayed from Cal over years, I mean, any interaction that the Red Raiders have ever had with, with Cal fans, whether it be on online message boards in conversations about uh, conference realignments <laughs> in uh, the 2004 Holiday Bowl when that came around. Very, very arrogant fans and, and seemingly team. This I don't know, Hacks, if, if I'm taking a look at teams outside the Big 12 Conference currently. I mean, OU and Texas will go there. To me, for sports hate level, it may be A&M number one and Cal number two. No joke. I don't know. I mean, Utah is coming into the conference, so I don't count them, but they're, they're getting there. Outside of my league, I can't stand the Cal Golden Bears. So I, I don't know how many other people share that sentiment with me, but there is so much pompous attitude out there in Berkeley, California, of we are greater than thou. It makes me really want to win this football game. Yeah, I, it, for me it's more about what you started with uh-huh. and being seven and six. And that's more and important, yeah. Just having general good feelings heading toward the, the next year because you need all you can get. I mean, this year was not a complete bust, but close. I mean, especially when you look at where – you know, everyone, for the most part, had you as a top 25 preseason team, a team that would challenge for a Big 12 championship. There were many reasons that didn't happen, but i tell you what, you get a little break and you go and you play well and win the Independence Bowl, you're going to be feeling a whole lot better about yourself and uh, can't wait to have Taj back, can't yeah. wait to you know, uh, see this new tight end from, uh, from Arizona State. Um, there's going to be a lot of positive things to take with you um but you know one thing that does me a little bit too after doing just the tiniest amount of research on cal is they closed the season pretty darn well they did three in a row to win to so they were three and six i'm sure their fan base had completely buried their chances of going to a bowl game they lost to usc by one mid-season yep. uh late october and then they rip off wins against Washington State, Stanford, and really bludgeon UCLA. Now, UCLA's a mess. But um, Cal, I think, won that one like 31-8, thir- <clears throat> to eight, something like that, 31-6. to six. So the way that they closed, that makes me a little bit excited for this game, a little bit more than if they would have l- limped in. And that's just looking at schedules. But, uh, uh, you know, a, a chance to – smack some of that pompous out of their mouths would be what I would be looking yeah, at trying a, to do. It's probably more of a cherry on top type of thing, the the opponent and getting to do that. Uh, but the, the seven and six thing matters. It, it just does matter because you don't want to put it all on one game, but we're, we're talking about trying to get back to the good old days. We've, we've talked about that. You've done the whole, hey, back-to-back winning Big 12 seasons for the first time since who? Mike Leach. The the good old days around here are Mike Leach era. It's it's pretty simple. You want to get back to winning uh seven to ten games a year and and competing for Big Twelve titles occasionally. Or really well, the new Big Twelve, you better be almost every year. Seventy six instead of sixty seven yeah. just means so much because you're now one win behind what you did the year before, which was considered a really good year. Yeah. You put yourself one win behind that, 
Um, you finish under Joey McGuire. What would that be? 15 and 11? So you had eight last year, so 15 and six. Five. Yeah, 11. <laughs> so oh. I just trusted you. I'm horrible. Oh, mom was just a guess, pretty much. 15 and 11 is where you'd be. Um, right yeah. That's, that's not too bad. And again, you mentioned, the, I think, the important thing, because even though this is year eight for me, uh, the first six years were all lo- <clears throat> losing Big 12 records. Excuse yeah. me. Hadn't done it so, since 09. You know, to have that back-to-back and then have a bowl win um, would be big, I think, for for many reasons that we've yeah. kind of highlighted here. So the the stat that will go there is – if if you win this game, then you will be then Joe McGuire will have the first winning record in his first two seasons since Mike Leach in two thousand and two thousand one. Your your you know coaches that have followed Tommy Tuberville lost second year. Uh, Cliff Kingsbury lost second year. Matt Wells I think lost first and second year. Didn't get to bowl games either the first two years. So it matters. It does. And I think uh, wanting to do that, getting to do that, getting that 7-6 and six record matters uh, quite a bit, I think, for just optics and excitement for the fan base moving forward. And there's a lot of excitement, a lot of reason, as you mentioned, Taj, some really good recruits coming in, um, a lot of reason to be excited for next season, but you need that springboard of a bowl game to get you there. Playing time is not required. This is the End of the Bench Podcast from 100.7 The Score. It is time for Ask the Bench Warmers. Bring your questions in right now. Yates Flooring Center chat line, easiest way to uh, get to us. You can tweet us at 107 The Score or dial us up on the Visual Edge IT hotline, 806-771-0973. He's Hacks. I'm Choice. Lucas Cross the Way. Questions for any and all of us are welcome. This one from a little bit earlier in the hour, but what do you guys think? Think about the proposed new FBS subdivisions. Where where was this? I, I looked for it. I couldn't. Oh, uh, this was the deal where they're going to basically form the Super League. Oh, okay. Remember when we were talking about where Texas Tech would fall on that list? And but I didn't know if the NCAA had budgetary come out and... wise, Texas Tech falls anywhere from twenty five to thirty. Because uh, okay, um, not every number is accurate and they change by the day or week or yeah. quarter so uh, you know we we're talking about the proposed legislation that would send off a, kind of a mega league yeah where you could play for the mega championship and where texas tech would fit into that scope so uh, I, I don't like it i i, I, oh, I don't either but I'm a huge fan of having everybody chase this even though i know it's probably not something you can catch um as far as a natty yeah yeah but i do still think there's room for everybody in college football um so i don't like it i don't like breaking off and playing for something secondary we all strive for the best we can get and that includes boise state like you mentioned who's got 90 some odd wins or whatever you know but they've been doing this in and i go i'm going to professional here but they've been doing this in europe forever well, they try to do it with soccer and well that's what i'm te- talking about they they've been doing it already in soccer to an extent not the super yeah, super remember powers. when they started to pluck the I do best remember that. from england and yeah they actually Germany had a, and... a ted lasso episode that was specific to that that was mm-hmm. very interesting but um but yeah they, they they've been talking or they've been doing this forever already in soccer they have a uh, Champions League, or sorry, Championship League. Then they have the Premier League is the top one. Then the Championship League, and then there's another one I can't even remember. You, you've had basically a system already. Do you think there would ever be any sort of relegation or promotion within this for teams that... Maybe. I think it, there would kind of have to be space for it. Yeah, because you know, it's kind of like Sneed says, and I'll paraphrase him, somebody's got to be Vanderbilt. Yeah. Somebody's got to be. So, yeah, if you go to. Like, before Lance Leipold, Kansas. If you go to a 30 team Super League, someone's going to be the bottom of that. Somebody's going to be Even if, continually getting wiped out. Yeah. If and then you would Kentucky, think you'd have to. Okay, hey, you bottom two, three, four, however many who have tried this over and over again, 
Your time is up. You're going down to the other division, and we're bringing up whoever's hanging out there at the top of the other division. Yeah. Um, this continuing with that. Do you think Texas and A&M will do whatever they can to keep Tech out of the Super League? I think te- A&M would be more likely to try to keep Tech out than Texas. Texas seems like they would be okay because I don't think they feel threatened. A&M feels threatened by Texas Tech. That's what. That's why AM was so ticked off that Texas got into their league, into the SEC. The SEC basically skirted around AM to sneak Texas and OU into the league. Because, I mean, they would have hated it and do hate it. So, no, I don't think... Uh, I don't know that Texas would try to keep Tech out. As a matter of fact, they may want them in. Because, again, someone's got to be Vanderbilt. And Texas would probably be like, hey, that can be... That could be towards the bottom. We can beat up on that. Um, here we go. Back to the Yates Flooring Center chat line. Choice had the deer hunt go this weekend. Uh, came up empty as far as deer go. But it was good. Got out in nature. Came home smelling like some like mesquite smoke. So it was good. Uh, nephew got one. Shout out to Weston. He got a deer. Uh, bench warmers, I know you all will be in different places, but if you had the choice to be at a basketball at the basketball game on Saturday or the bowl game, which would you do? As a fan? Yeah, as a fan, I think is what they... As a fan, I'm going to the football game. I, that's how I would do it, too, because, well, it's a 6 There's a lot of hoops coming game. up. Yeah, and, and, I mean, if you're playing against Kentucky in Dallas or in Fort Worth, it's probably a little different. Vandy's 4-5 and five right now. They just haven't been that impressive... Um, I say that. I hope you don't. I'm not jinxing. That doesn't exist. <laughs> I hope that uh, Tech goes and takes care of business because I think Tech, as of right now, Hex, I think you're going to be in what an eight point favorite around there, eight ten, eight to ten point favorite over Vanderbilt on uh, on Saturday. I think you're that much better of a team than them. So as far as interest of the game, it's still postseason, even if it's an exhibition game. Um, yeah, I'm I'm taking the bowl game. If just like if I'm a- offered a regular season football game versus a postseason basketball game, like a Sweet Sixteen basketball game or something, I probably choose the postseason there as well. Just means a little bit more. Uh, Bench warmers, just curious, how is Rutgers getting these highly rated recruits for basketball? I don't know. I don't follow. I haven't seen that. I don't know where they're at. In the rankings, New Jersey. <laughs> That's why I added in the rankings because I knew I knew you were coming. That yeah, Rutgers never heard of them before. Yeah, it looks like they've got the number one shooting guard and small forward in the country. Number two and number three. I couldn't even tell you Rutgers coach. Could you? I... No, they are in a so a huge black doing... hole for me. Right. Yeah, but... two five stars both. Top five players in the country. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, uh, someone says Taj just reminds me of Marshawn Lynch. Brooks reminds me of him more power than top end speed that can be valuable for a pro team, but probably not top money for that position. That's from Scooter. Yeah, I don't. I don't disagree. Um, Taj will probably be more. I I do think Taj can be a successful NFL back. I don't think he's a number one back though in the NFL and guys have made plenty of plenty of money and uh, been able to have success there independence bowl isn't comparable to a sweet 16 game unless you mean the NIT sweet 16 I'm just saying it's postseason football compared to a a pre conference matchup with Vanderbilt I I, I get it it's postseason football it's Heck, if you ask me if I would go see the Longhorns play against Texas Tech in basketball, I'd probably care about that one more. Probably. I don't know. As as we were talking about earlier, I, my interest level in this game is still really high because you need to get to that seventh win. It's just important. I think it's important for the, the progress and the direction of your program. If you were – what's your confidence level, though, in the team? So I asked you what your interest is. What, what's confidence level that Tech's going to win this bas- or football game? Mm. 
Vegas has kept it. It's hung it's around three, three, for three, 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 three pretty three, well three. since it's opened. 60%. Okay. So, I mean, really the... Uh, have you checked the FPI? Can you click on that? I can. See what those percentages say. I bet it's like 65% tech there. 60%, 59, actually 59.2%. So there you go. See, I don't need to do any of these pop quizzes. I just need to do just need line to, stuff. Yeah, no kidding. You just need to peg the line. What? What's our line in the... I think Saban's going to send one of his lackeys up to smack me and upside the head for... Missing that? Not having them. lackeys. <laughs> <laughs> Last I saw he was test driving a Ferrari. Was he really? Yeah. I, I actually just saw the whole when when Alabama got down thirteen to nothing in the the uh, SEC championship game. I just saw the list of the message board geniuses. <laughs> it's like, oh, Saban, the game's already passed Saban by. I mean, just the stuff. <laughs> it is amazing. If you think we have a nutty fan base in Lubbock, just know that we're not alone because we do. But it is everywhere. There are fanatical fans at every single location and. That's part of what makes college football so great. People care so much. People care. And if you don't have it that way, then you become a cow where you have to buy your way into the ACC and play across the country for conference games over and over. Y'all chime in with, uh, no, you can't. We're out of time. But you can for tomorrow. We'll uh, be back at it with Tuesday edition of the end of the bench. Appreciate you joining us today. For Jeff Haxton and for Lucas White. I'm Choice Woodman. It's been the end of the bench on 100.7 The Score. Bottom line, coming up next. This has been the end of the bench podcast from 100.7 The Score. Go to 107thescore.com for more from the Double T Sports Network.